Good morning, church. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. I know your faith is little now. That is the only way out. Only faith places God. Hallelujah. Let us pay a visit to Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith. Let's take a look at Genesis 22. A visit to Abraham. Tell your neighbor, a visit to Abraham. So let's look at verse 8. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the bond offering. My son and the two of them went on together. So let's read together verse 8. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. My son and the two of them went on together. Hmm. When you are facing challenges, you say, God himself will save me. God himself will provide. When your financial system is down, you say, God himself will provide. When everything is down, you say, God himself. What does that mean to you? This means Abraham's faith. You know, when I talk of faith, believe. Abraham's faith, I mean, Abraham's belief was not on Isaac, but on God. A visit to Abraham, tell your neighbor, a visit to Abraham. We want to have a wisdom from that. If our faith is on the giver, bracket, God, even when what is given is taken away, we will still have hope. Are you with me? When our faith is on the giver, that is God, even when what is given is taken away, we will still have hope on who? On God. Many are not in the church today because the engine of their vehicle knock. Then they say to their family, we cannot go to church, there is no vehicle to convey us. They have forgotten then when they were coming by commercial vehicle to the church. When what is given is taken away, that is the more reason we should believe God the more. Have faith in God the more. When your car engine is knocked, that is the more reason you should believe God the more. When you have health problems, challenges, that is the more reason you should believe God. Abraham was asked to sacrifice the only son. Assume he had faith on his only son. He will not have courage to obey God's instruction. Assume Abraham had faith on his only son, he will not have courage to obey God's God instruction. Satan wants you to curse God. Satan wants you to live outside the truth where your light is coming from, why you are in pain, why under temptation, why under affliction, 
He wants you to live outside the truth where your light, light is coming from. Those who bless God in their trial prove their sonship. Those who bless God in pain prove their sonship. Those who bless God while under temptation, tribulation, affliction, prove their sonship. Tell your neighbor, keep your focus. Keep your focus. You must keep your focus because of the purpose of life. The purpose of life is why things are going good and going bad. Life must balance. If life is not this way and that way, it's not balance. Life balance when one love a wife and frank. There's time to laugh, time to cry. Time to rejoice, time to search. Keep your focus. If your faith is on your possession, your belief is on your possession, you will continue to be a friend of Satan. If your faith, I mean your belief, is on your possession, every minute, every time, you will continue to be tempted from one temptation to other. When Satan knows you like your possession more than the giver, you will not have a second to rest. 24-7, from one temptation to another. When your car is good today, your children will be sick tomorrow. When your children is fine today, your car will be bad tomorrow. When your business is going well today, you will have many funeral. When money comes, there will be so much responsibility where to put that money. If your faith, your belief is on your possession, 24-7, Satan will continue to visit you. Satan will continue to what? Visit you 24-7. If your belief is on your possession, what are the possession? Your money, property, your children, yourself. Everything apart from God are your possessions. Your health, your money, your property, your fame, your name, your everything. If your belief is on your possession, 24-7, Satan will continue to visit you. You will not have peace or rest. When you think you have overcome, another minute, an attack somewhere. Because Satan knows you have faith. What is the meaning of belief on our possession? Something you cherish most. Something that can disturb your attention. Something that can disturb your relationship with God. Something that can cause you worry, anxiety. A visit to Abraham. Once again, if our faith is on the giver, the God, even when what is given to us is taken away, we will still have hope. It will not make different. Rather, it will strengthen your desire for God. When what is given is taken away, it will strengthen your desire for who? 
sent your desire for God. You see reason to pray the more. Listen to fast the more. Listen to stay close. But if your faith, your belief is on your possession 24-7, Satan will continue to visit you and you will not have rest. Think over it. Vanity upon vanity. Pray against your weakness, not your situation. Stay focused. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's possible to have peace 24 7. Peace is not on the outside, but on the inside. I'm not talking of peace on the outside. Because you judge Christian today by the peace on the outside, not on the inside. When the grace are good and the business is going well and everything is booming, you want to meet your neighbor. Which church are you attending? I want to follow you there because you're sitting going well. You want to follow him? Those who have peace on the inside can only prove their sonship. When Satan knows that your faith is not on your possession, but on the giver, he will stop disturbing you. If I'm talking to you, if Satan knows that your faith is not on your possession, but on God, he will stop disturbing you. Because he cannot touch any other thing apart from your possession. It's not possible. The only thing Satan can touch are your possessions. And when he now knows that your faith is not on your possession but on God, he will stop disturbing you. Because disturbing you is a way of drawing you close to God. When he strikes on your possession, you see the need of God the more. When he strikes on this, you fast the more. You will say, ah, this man, I'm trying to overthrow him, but the more I strike on his procession, the more he moves closer to God. His aim is to overthrow you, your position from God. So when he know today that your faith is not on your possession, but God, he will stop disturbing you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, when Satan know that your faith is not on your possession, he will stop disturbing you. When he know that your faith is not on your possession, but the giver will stop disturbing you. When he hits your possession, you get disturbed. You begin to curse God. Why? I serve you now. Why my business is falling? People outside there will be mocking me. They will ask me which God I'm serving. Why all this is happening? When you want to pray, you begin to say, God, restore my business. Restore my business. Every good thing God has been doing for you, you forget about it. You forget about everything. The goodness of God right from your back. Even when you are in embryo, you forget about anything about God. Restore my business. Restore my business. Restore my business. And imagine you said that to your father. A father, your biological father that has been caring for you, loving you. You forget everything. Instead of saying, thank you, Jesus, for what you have been doing. Restore my business. Until he restores that business, you will never say thank you. And this is what Satan wants. He wants you to misbehave, to show that you are in great. Anytime there is prayer now, immediately you go to your trouble. Ah, hear me, hear me, hear me. You have forgotten everything the Lord has been doing. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. To say thank you, no way, until he hear you. 
These are possessions we are talking about. When Satan knows that your faith is not on your possession, but the giver of that possession, he will stop disturbing you. The reason why he disturbs you is to take you away from God. I don't judge people by possession. When you say this man is very rich, he has everything, mm, I will listen to you. I don't judge people. I judge people by the peace of heart. No. Peace of heart is above all. Tell your neighbor, peace of heart is above all. There is nothing apart from peace of heart that criminal cannot have. Criminal can be the richest in the world. Criminal can have fame known all over the world. Criminal can have children. Criminal can have children that are professor all over. Tell me what criminal cannot have apart from peace of heart. They can have fame, popularity, position, power. There is nothing they cannot achieve. But the only thing they cannot achieve is peace of heart. Sleep and close eye. Because of what they have done all over, they are always waiting for repercussion. When they close eye, they are waiting for repercussion. They think the repercussion can come next. It can come next. It can come anywhere. There is no peace of heart. What makes you Christian then? When the Bible says a man can be poor, yet be a friend of God. When the Bible says a man can be sick in the body, yet be a friend of God. Think about that. A man can be poor, yet be a friend of God, a candidate of heaven. The generation we have today, these are the message you need. Because the way you run extra scatter trying to compare yourself to others, anytime you have competition, you begin to say, I determine the living God. The other man is not serving the living God. Okay? I know my God will get it. At the end of the day, if you did not get that contract, and the one serving Satan got this contract, you begin to curse your God. How can you put your God to test? Ask your neighbor, how can you put your God to test? It is we that God put him to test, not we put him to test. We don't put God to test. We don't ask God to come and sit for examination. And you now be the marker. As if you are the God, and God is subject. And at the end of the day, you mark God that is faith. God has faith, though. Is that not the meaning? When you could not get the contract, God has faith. Why should we? That's if we put God to test. You are sick. Say, my God must heal me. I'm faster. Yes, I serve a living God. You are putting him to test. Do you know what it means? I'll give him a time. Today, if I did not get what I need, I think I'll have to do something about it. This is why you cannot get what you are looking for. The purpose of life is good time and hard time alive. That is the purpose of life. Life is not one-sided. When goings are good and when goings are hard, this is life for you. When the goings are good and the goings are well, are hard, that hard times serve a purpose to test your faith. Your faith must be tested. And if your faith is not tested, you cannot be promoted. Are you with me? If your faith is not tested, you cannot be promoted. If your faith is not tested, your Christian life cannot grow. You cannot grow spiritually. Test 
are made for your belief. Tests are made for your, for your belief. That is test and me trial are made for your belief. You refuse to grow because you avoid tests. When tests come, you find all means outside God. Yes, outside God, one can get what you want, but without peace of heart. Are you with me? Outside God, you can get money, but without peace of war, peace of heart. Outside God, you can get fame, popularity, crown, power, position, without peace of war, of heart. That is outside God. This is what I mean by to live outside the truth where your light is coming from. Outside the truth means outside God. This message you received from Abraham, I pray your faith will grow today. And from now on, you begin to have faith on the giver, not on the possession. Can't you hear what God said to Satan when he said there is a man called Job? What make him righteous? Will you allow me to go and destroy him? Well, you can tamper with everything but his heart. Tamper with everything but his heart. Don't go there. Everything, even including the children. Everything, including property, everything. What is try? So this is what I'm talking about. Faith on the possession is faith on Satan. Faith on the possession is Satan word, trap. Many people may not understand the word faith on possession. Me, when you begin to worship that possession, and that possession seems to take your time, your quality time, your pressure time, your dear time of God, that is faith on your possession to take time off God, the quality time, the arrest time, the time you cherish, take it off God. Off God. Many of us, we travel all over the world just for business. Remember how many times you really have time to be in one accord with God. Hmm? That is the question. As a man of God, I know the heart of everyone here. If you receive a call as you are sitting down, that something you have been expecting for so long has been released, you should move immediately on that 30 minutes to get it. You abandon this church. Can you say faith on possession? You abandon the church, you go. And remember, you are here today because you don't have so much press issue to attend to. You are here today because you don't have an important engagement or important issue, very, very dear and very, very important issue to attend to. That is why you come to church. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have very important issue to attend to, and somebody is ready to pay you the debt or the contract you have been looking for, we are asking you to come and even collect just a document, you're likely not to come here. Can you say the war today 
have faith on the possession, not the giver of that possession. That is why the world is upside down. Our Christian life is rubbish. Who is serving God? We are serving possession. Tell your neighbor, who is serving God? You are serving possession. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, who is serving God? You are serving possession. Seven possession. Look at your seat. How many presidents are here with you? How many governors are here with you? How many ministers are here with you? Now, and the same God that put them there, when they were nobody, they were asking God, praying, praying, but when they get there, their time is so dear to spend with people. House of God has now become insecure for them. That is possession. We are serving possession, no longer serving God. People are no longer serving God. People are no longer serving the giver. The giver of possession, but people are serving possession. This is the cause of problem today. And Satan know that we are serving possession and he keep hit our possession. Hit our possession. Look at what God said to Satan. When he, he came to God, he said, look, this, your boy, this man, they say he's a righteous man, he's a nice man. Will you allow me? And the Lord said, you can strike anything but his heart. Strike his possession but his heart. I will never. So, if you have faith in possession, it has access to your possession. But if you have faith in giver of possession, it has no access to your possession. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, if you have faith in your possession, Satan will have access to your possession. But if you have faith on the giver, of possession, Satan cannot have access to your possession. Check it again. If you have faith on your possession, Satan will have access on that possession. Because God does not permit anyone to worship possession but the source. You have faith in your possession, faith in your property, in your money, in your fame, even in yourself. You yourself also, you are a possession. Only your heart. Tell your neighbor, you, you are a possession. You have faith in yourself, you have faith in your possession. So once you have faith, in your possession, Satan will have access. You have faith in yourself. That is why Satan is attacking your head. You will see those things you love so much in your life that Satan attack. But when you have faith in the giver of that possession, instead of possession, you have faith in the giver of that possession. Your possession will be under the referee, under cover. So, I'm just telling you the secret, the cause of trouble and challenges you are having today. The war has problem because their faith are on the possession, not the giver of possession. Where are we going? A visit to Abraham. If Abraham's faith were on his only son, he will not have the courage to obey the instruction of God. This is also what has happened to us in the house of God today. We should trust in the authority of God, not the majority. Because the strength of the church is not the numbers of the large size of the church. Some church can be three members and they are more anointed than the biggest church. 
centurion membership. Thank you. Hallelujah. If your faith is lifted, Lord, let us see your hand. Thank you. Brother, can you come and share with me what lesson you le learned from this message? Thank you. Uh, I've learned to put my faith in God, not in possessions. What are your possessions? Everything apart from my heart. Everything. Apart from Clap for him. He said everything apart from his heart. His heart. Where God dwells. Our heart is the communication point. This is why the Bible says faith is of man's heart. He said everything talk of apart from the heart. This is why God was warning Satan. He said, I'm going to disturb this man. I'm going to leave me, let me destroy. So no, you can go and do whatever you want to do. But his heart, don't go there. It's a sacred place. Me, every other thing are possessions. Thank you very much. So as from today, how do you want to live your life? I'm going to cultivate my heart more. Keep it in the word of God. Hmm. Hmm. Clap for him. If sickness come, how will you handle your relationship? I'll continue God? to look upon God. If he doesn't heal me, I'll continue to thank him for that. That is, if the sickness come, it's a way of praying the more. Yes. Seeing the need of God. Amen. The more. Amen. Not abandon your post. When your faith are not on your possession, Satan will stop disturbing you. And you know that this man's faith is not on his head. This man's faith is not on his property. He will not go there and, and tap her with your property. He's looking for where you put your faith on. He's fighting our faith. He's fighting our faith. He will look at, where does this man put his faith? Okay, his bank account. He will go there and strike. And because your faith is there, there's no protection for that bank account. But if your faith is on God, the giver of that back account, the giver will protect the possession. So we expose our possession. Our possession are unsecure because we put our faith on it. The one to secure that possession is the one we should put our faith on. Imagine I gave you something. Come on, give me. No, you ask me. Please give me this. Give Please me give this. me that. I now give you, you abandon me. You are now worship the thing you asked me to give you. What do you think I will feel? You will feel I was chasing you because you, of something that you had. Bring it again. Bring two. Bring two. Oh, yeah, begin to ask God. Pl please, can I have? Please, can I have? Please, may I have? Now, you have it. The time you used to have with me, 24 7, you always have with me when you are asking for this. But now you have received this, you hardly have two hours with me. Even that two hours is always in hurry. Bring it again. Bring that bag more, that bag. I think we need to explain. Okay, come on. Now, I want to use this so that you understand what I'm talking about. You are without nothing. Yes. Nothing, you are just nothing. Yes. And you want good health. You want money, you want position, you want fame. Okay, which one you want to ask God to give you? Fame. Oh yeah, pray. Please may I have fame, please may I have fame. Now, he doesn't need me anymore. What he need is fame, Abby. Now he doesn't need me until maybe he need good health now. That is when he will call on me. 
Now he needs good health now. Instead of continuing to remember what I have given him, anytime he wants to pray for good health, he has to remember, thank you for what you have done for me, for giving me fame. But he has forgotten about the fame. He needs good health. Oh, yeah, good health. Give me good health. In the name of Jesus, give me good health. See, what I have given him, he has forgotten about it. He's asking for good health. He's asking for good health. He has forgotten altogether about fame. It's like the blessing keep taking our time off God. Off. 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 This fame now, you begin so popular, many people depend on you. You have vehicle, you have trailer. All these are possession. We seems to have faith on the possession and forget the giver. The giver. That put our possession on secure. Because the one to secure that possession is the one you have neglect. You have fear to put your faith on. Your bag is blessed. I want to believe that you quite understand the demonstration. You, you have seen your wrong. If you have seen your wrong, raise up your hand. You know you are wrong, raise up your hand. Say, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, Lord. oh Lord, help me. Help. You have seen you are wrong now. Say, so we are wrong. We are wrong. I want to leave here. Thank you. We believe you have been inspired by the clip you have just watched. Click here to subscribe to witness more of God's power at work in our generation today and stay up to date with the latest prophecies, deliverances, sermons and testimonies from the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Emmanuel TV, changing lives, changing nations and changing the world.